Cortez was not worried about Aztec souls. He was after their gold. And he got it. But not before defeating a force of some 100,000 well-trained Aztec soldiers. Cortez himself commanded no more than a thousand Spanish troops. History reports that three factors were responsible for the relatively swift Spanish victory. The first was smallpox. The conquistadors had brought the disease with them. The Indians had no natural immunity and an epidemic ensued. Weaponry is often brought as a factor in the, in the conquest. Uh, the Spaniards had steel weapons, they had uh, firearms, they had cannons. But could these two other factors, gunpowder and steel, really have been powerful enough to overcome what was still overwhelming odds? The history books say yes. The unsolved history team decided to put conventional wisdom to the test with the help of anthropologists and weapons experts Ross Hazick, Jack Schultz and Gary James. This is a good proper 1500 period gun. It's what's called a matchlock. And the ignition is by actually by this burning cord. The Aztecs had shields, but these were designed to stop darts and arrows, not Spanish bullets. It went all the way through. There's a real psychological effect to these things. You have this tremendous noise and, and fire. Jeez. Oh, man. <laughs> There's this big flash of light that goes up in your face. The steel armor of the Spaniards could have withstood most Aztec weapons. But it didn't cover the whole body. Actually, this is pretty typical of kills because most of the wounds that the Spaniards took were down the neck and under the arm and around the armor. While gunpowder gave the Spanish a clear technological advantage in long-range exchanges, it was not practical in close contact. The problem is the, how slow it was to load and reload and having to then protect your marksmen uh, before they were taken out by other weaponry from the, from the native peoples. For hand-to-hand -hand combat, soldiers on both sides use swords, but of very different designs. This is called a makwawit. It's a wooden sword. It was inset with very sharp obsidian blades. These are just like, like very, very sharp knives. Very brittle though, but, uh, but extremely effective in cutting. It would be very effective, as you can imagine, as a slashing item, right? If you were to slash him, that would cut right through your arm. Now that was a cut. You can see that. They cut in here easily, six, seven inches, single blow cutting right through that. Like easily, lethal blows, easily. Though not as powerful, the Spanish swords were faster and just as deadly. Steel swords had another advantage against the Aztecs' more primitive weapons. You can see the damage here. We've lost almost our entire row of blades. The wood has been damaged beyond repair, but the impact really annihilated this weapon. This has an exceedingly sharp edge, razor, razor sharp, but not very durable. Close up, the two armies would have been fairly evenly matched. But even at longer range, gunfire would not have been enough to tip the balance in favor of the Spaniards, because the Indians had a deadly countermeasure. The sling. Clearly lethal if you're unarmored. Yeah. In the face. Break the cheekbone, put him out of commission. In a battle, there would have been thousands of these. So I think, all in all, excellent weapon. The Aztecs used uniformly rounded clay balls and stones as projectiles for the sling. These traveled at more than 240 kilometers per hour. Their consistent size and weight made them accurate and deadly. Take a look at this. It's a, a very simple technology. A string sling made out of McGay fibers, several simple knots is the only construction. Uh, this replica was made in about 30 minutes, start to finish, and anyone could make this. It was a simple knot, simple technology, but you see how terribly lethal it was. The simplicity of these weapons gave the Indians a considerable advantage. 
if this breaks, the warrior can retie it. He can pick up stones for his uh, use. If the Spanish weapon breaks, the sword is broken, no one there can fix it. If the gun stops working, you need to repair the matchlock. You just don't have near the, uh, the simplicity of the technology. But again, it's very, very effective. Our tests suggest that the accepted historical view of Spanish military superiority can't be borne out. Anyone who's seen these 500-year-old weapons in action would agree. 